Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Megan with Fine Designs by Megan, and today I'm going to be showing you this cute leopard neon split tumbler. I did do it in a 30 ounce curve, and I also did it in a 24 ounce plum from Steel Magnolia, so you might see them switched out throughout the video. Also, it is going to be a longer video, so please remember that all of the products that I used, or most of them, will be linked down in the description box. So check down there if you have any questions. Um, if you do have any questions, you can ask them in the comments section. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. So let's get started. First, you're going to want to start out with a fully prepped tumbler. I do sand them, clean them, and I do spray paint them white. The white will help the fluorescent show up more. And I'm just going to be using a fluorescent pink, a fluorescent yellow, fluorescent green, and Oasis Blue by Rust-Oleum. These fluorescents are Rust-Oleum, but I actually prefer the Krylon fluorescents better. I just haven't been able to find them a whole lot since COVID. But those are my preferred one. I think they're a little bit brighter. Now, on the pink, so you're going to spray your pink, and then you're going to spray your yellow. And when your yellow mixes with your pink fluorescent, it's going to turn orange. So I kind of spray the pink a little bit further down, and then I spray the yellow, and then spray up on top. Once you get your desired orange look and how much you want your orange to be, make sure you do spray on some of the yellow more. And like I said, the Rust-Oleum yellow isn't as bright as the Krylon one. Um, so once you're done with that, you're going to move on to your green. Spray your green on there, your fluorescent green, and then you'll go and move on to your Oasis blue. And on this cup, I do not spray the bottom blue. So I just spray the outside area and then your bottom will be gold because we're going to put the leopard onto the bottom of the 32 curve. Once it's completely painted and done, you're going to let it dry for about an hour because the blue doesn't dry as quick as the other two. Let it dry for an hour and then we'll move on to the next step. Now you're going to want to get a scrap piece of paper and a pencil and outline the bottom of the cup that way we can get it proportioned in half just like if you were going to do a v split you're going to do the same thing on this one and you're going to start it off pretty much like a v split so get that circle cut out and then you're going to half it once it's halved you're going to lay it on your bottom and mark your cup Once you have your bottom markings on both sides, I'm going to grab this magnetic ruler I got at Michael's and it lays perfectly flat. Like if you're standing up, it's going to be perfectly flat and it will magnetize onto your cup. And this is how we're going to get our markings up at the top. So you want your marking to be directly above the bottom marking. So once you have it perfectly straight, go ahead and make your mark and then you'll turn it around and make your mark on the other side. And then we'll move on to the next step. Now I'm going to grab my tumbler cradle from Cami Page Boutique. I did line it with some felt to make it where it won't scrape any of my paint. And I'm going to grab my blue painter's tape and mark it from one side to the other or lay it however you want to describe it. And I am going to actually put it on the outside of my line. So I hope this explains it. I'm, I want it to not overlap each other. I want them to literally butt up against each other because I want my bases to be more flat or fatter. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. I'm not very good at explaining it. So like my outer edge of my tape, I want it to lay right up against the line, not go over the line, my marking line. Um, if you need to see the picture of the cup to understand what I'm talking about, you'll see where like the blue base of the glitter is wider. That's why I have it like this, okay? And then I want my, instead of it being like a point of a V, I want it to just kind of be a little bit wider. I hope that makes sense, okay? I'm trying to explain it, but I'm not very good. And yes, you guys, it does take a little bit to lay your tape. And with this cup, you are going to be using a lot of tape. So I hope you're okay with that. If not, try to figure out a different way to do all of the taping. Once 
once you get done with that side see where i line up the edge up to the edge of that line so you're going to have a wider base up there now do you see what i'm trying to say hopefully you see that then you're going to do your next line and line it up right edge to edge instead of making like a straight v across the tape you're going to have it do this so hopefully you guys see that better now and then once that's done you're going to move on to your next step next grab you a marker and mark your blue tape with an r because that's going to be your rainbow lines and then where the side is a deeper v mark it r there because that's going to be your rainbow side once you're done with that grab a ruler measuring tape whatever you have and mark up your blue paint four and a half inches because that's where you're going to start your white line and you'll lay your tape for your white line and make sure you mark both sides of your tape because you're going to have your white lines on both sides now grab your painters tape and i am using one inch painters tape i forgot to mention that before so grab your painters tape and you're going to put your tape right above the line that you made that you created and you are going to angle it up to the outside of the line that we had put up at the top so go ahead and put it on that top edge and once you get your tape added on do it onto the other side and then we'll move on to the next step now I'm going to get my knife exacto knife whatever you have and you're going to cut right on the edge where it's overlapping the other one because you're going to eventually pull up that tape and you're going to make the white line go between your rainbow lines. So I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. So just make sure you do that on both sides. And then once you get that done, you will need to trim up the excess tape right there and pull that off because we're going to actually go and spray paint that gold. And then I'm going to do that on both sides. And once that done, grab a marker and then mark that tape that we just laid down. I just put a white line on it. That way I know that that's where my white line is going to be. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of painter's tape, more painter's tape, yay. And I'm going to cover up where my rainbow is going to be, like my rainbow side's gonna be, because we're going to take out this cup and we're going to spray paint it gold. So make sure that your rainbow side is all covered up and it won't get any gold spray paint on it so we're going to end up spray painting the little v's up there those little tiny areas we're going to spray paint those gold because it's going to be leopard and then the other side is going to be leopard and also the bottom once you get it spray painted let it sit for about 30 minutes to an hour and fully dry and then we're going to start marking or laying tape on the edges of where our white line is going to be. So if you have to trim up any tape that's overlapping onto your white line, do that. And then just lay your tape around there. Make sure you cover up any of the gold tape or the gold paint that is around where your white section is. Because when you go to spray paint your cup white, you do not want any of the white paint to get onto the gold. So once you get your tape all laid and all pull that, pull up where your white line will be it will explode the rainbow and then you're just going to do that on both sides take it outside and spray paint it white once that is spray painted white just let it sit for about an hour before we go on to glittering I'm jumping in here to say make sure you do trim up where your V split or your V is going to be up there on both sides. Make sure it's all trimmed up and nice and pretty before we go on to spray painting. Now on to glittering. Before we glitter, we are going to lay painter's tape over the white lines that we just did because we do not want any of the rainbow glitter getting onto that white paint. So go ahead, cover up that white paint. Then go ahead and pull up the tape that you use to cover up your gold sections where your, your gold sections will be. Go ahead and pull up all of that excess tape too. And then you're going to lay some masking tape or your blue tape go ahead and line up 
the edges of your gold sections because you don't want the neon glitter or epoxy getting on those sections either. And then once that's done and your tape's all lined, go ahead and start pulling up all of the tape where your rainbow sections are going to be. So you're going to do both lines and then your main middle area. And then once that's all pulled up, we'll be ready to move on to our epoxy and glittering. Now we are going to apply epoxy to do the glitter method. I am going to be using a facet epoxy. If you're slower at glittering, go ahead and do a regular set so you'll have more time to apply your glitter. Once I have my epoxy on there smooth, I'm going to literally go back with my glove and pat the section that I applied the epoxy. If you ever notice when you apply glitter with the epoxy method and you ever have lines in your glitter, that's because you can have lines when you apply your epoxy. So if you pat it and make it rough looking, you won't have those lines anymore. So just there's you a tip and trick on applying epoxy and glitter. Now we are going to start applying our glitter and the first one is It's Electric by Diamonds and Dust. I will actually be using all Diamonds and Dust glitter on this tumbler. And I'm going to apply thin coats of glitter the first time. So I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle it on there, front and back, and this will help you with your ombre instead of having like lines of where your glitters are if you just apply a light coat first as like your base then you can go in your second time and really do your heavier coats this will just give you a better ombre effect okay so there's you a little tip and trick on that one um, and then once you're done with your pink you're gonna go in with your orange and I'll be using gnarly from diamonds and dust it is a pretty neon orange and just lightly Ombre it down into your pink, and then you'll also sprinkle a little bit into where your yellow area is going to be, and just lightly sprinkle it, okay, into your yellow area and your pink. Um, where your orange is mostly going to be, primarily, you can do it a little bit heavier, but in those other areas, do it light. Then I'm gonna knock all my glitter off before I go on to the other side, and then we'll move on to our yellow. The yellow glitter is as if, also from Diamonds and Dust. I'm gonna sprinkle it lightly into the orange and then into the green section and then a little bit heavier into where my yellow will be. Do it on both sides, just like you did the first two. For the next glitter, I'm gonna be using Radical, also from Diamonds and Dust, and I'm gonna be applying it just like I did the previous glitters. Light coat on this one, just to help get a better ombre effect. Okay, once we're done, we'll move on to the blue. For the blue, it's gonna be Totally Tubular. Her names are so cute, that one cracked me up. But anyways, Totally Tubular. So apply that lightly both sides. And then once that's done, we are going to go back with our pink. And this time we're gonna go in and give it a full coverage look, make sure it's all ombre in good and there's not any solid lines. Um, and then after that, you're going to let it sit for about two hours if you're using a facet epoxy before you go in and start adding your gold. And I did pull up my tape while my epoxy was still wet. You can pull it up after, but I always pull mine up while it's still wet, so just be careful not to hit any of your neons. And then we'll move on after it's fully dried. Now that it's dried, we're going to go in with Champagne from Diamonds and Dust, and I'm going to be using my glue mixture that I created. So it's Tacky Glue by Alina's Mod Podge Mix, and I am going to just start applying it onto the gold and make sure you're really careful not to get it onto the white. If you are not as good or not good at applying your glues or paints, go ahead and leave your tape there where your white is, and then that way you'll keep your white protected. I wasn't thinking about it, and I pulled mine up, and I probably should have left mine down, but you know what? I did it, and 
I made it work anyways. So just apply your glitter and then once your glitter is applied, go ahead and let it sit for about an hour and fully dry. And then we'll go in and start doing our spots. And so make sure you glitter all of your gold areas on your cup. I'm jumping in for another tip. After you apply your glitter, go ahead and pat it down with your finger. That way it helps push your glitter down into your adhesive and also helps it stay flatter. So when you go to epoxy, it won't be so rough after epoxying. Okay, there's your tip. Now that your cup's dry, we're gonna make a paint glue adhesive mixture. I'm just using my glitter glue that I have created and I add a little bit of brown acrylic paint. And if you have watched a lot of my previous leopard videos, you know how I do my leopard spots. So I'm just going to apply my paint mixture in little spots. Leopard does not have to be perfect, okay? Does not have to be perfect. And you do wanna make them in different sizes, not all just big, huge globs of brown. Make smaller globs bigger globs, all of that. Then I'm going to go in with Burnett from Diamonds and Dust, add that on to the cup. And then after your spots are on, let it dry for about 30 minutes before you go in and do your black. For the black, I created me my own little glitter glue paint adhesive by using my glitter glue mixture and some acrylic black paint. Then I'm going to just dab on some black around the edges of my leopard print. Um, if you need a more detailed description on how I do my leopard print, you can watch the previous video that I uploaded and it slowly explains how I do my leopard print. So there's that. And then I'm going to be going in with Black Beauty for my black glitter. And once that is all done, I'm going to let my cup dry for about 30 minutes before I go and do my white glitter section. For the white, I'm going to be using Bubbles from Diamonds and Dust. It's like a really beautiful, not super fine opaly mix. And I did create me my own little white glitter glue mixture. So I just applied some acrylic paint into my little glitter glue mixture. Um, I did post a video on how I did my glitter glue mixture on TikTok, but I'll go ahead and post one on here as a short so you guys will know what I'm talking about on my glitter glue mixture. And I'm just going to apply it onto the 
white lines and you're going to be very careful and i just apply mine about halfway up and then i'll apply my glitter and i'm going to press my glitter down with my finger and then once all of my white glitter is on i am going to let it dry for 30 minutes before we start sealing it once it's dried, I'm going to seal it three times with triple thick spray. I usually do twice, but I went ahead and did three times because I really want to make sure that none of my glitters move when I'm epoxy in. And I'm going to be using a fast set thicker viscosity epoxy. So I only applied two layers of epoxy. If you're using a thinner base epoxy, go ahead and epoxy it three times. So when you go to sand it, it won't be like super rough. Um, and it'll be more smooth and ready to be sanded because you don't want to sand and mess up any of your glitters. Now I'm going to go in with this iridescenty silver washi tape that I got from Hobby Lobby. You can use vinyl, you can use nail tape, anything like that, whatever you have. Um, whatever color you want, this is just what I had on hand. I didn't have any vinyl that was really the color that I was wanting. And once you get your lines applied, go ahead and trim up around your top edges. Make sure your V areas are trimmed up and nice. And then once your stuff is applied, we'll be able to move on to the next step. Once all your taping is applied and trimmed up, go ahead and spray it with triple thick spray. This will keep it all from lifting during epoxy time. And this is the 24 plump that I made, um, so you guys can see it. And I'm just going to apply 20 mLs of the fast set epoxy that I use. It is a thicker viscosity. Um, I was able to have it nice and good with just one coat, but if you're using a thinner one, go ahead and use two coats. Um, and then I'm going to pop all the bubbles with my heat gun. So I'm sorry this video was a little bit long. I hope I made sense and you guys understood. If you liked my video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It actually helps me more than you know and helps me be able to continue making you guys tutorials. Um, all the products that I used or most of them will be linked down in the description box. If you have any questions, please ask them. And I hope you guys love it. Bye, you guys. Thank you.